There we go. Hello, my friends. How are you doing? Hi. <laughs> Thanks for joining me. I saw there was more chat and then I started streaming and somehow the rest of the chat got cut off. I don't know. So if your message somehow is missing, <laughs> you have to write hello again. <laughs> yeah, let's see. Okay, so today is a talk about um, how to make money or how to be business minded because I think it's kind of an interesting part. It's an important part about the whole AI thing that it doesn't dry up that people figure out how you kind of make a business about that right because it's it, if it just keeps about being fun and people don't know what to do with that um i kind of feel like it's going nowhere right it's just like drying up and it's like uh, where where will it actually be of course the big studios are going to use it right but what about you guys right so so that is the the task for the uh, live stream today the reason why I do it as a live stream is because last time people got a bit confused by my video. So, um, yeah, I want to see your feedback, what kind of questions you have, and then we can go from there, right? So it's more like a interactive thing right now, right? Let me have a sip of coffee. Mm. All right, let's um, have a look at the, at, the, at the chat here real quick. Um... Chat GPT. Yeah, I actually wanted to do that. I'm happy I didn't do this as a chat topic today because I just tried to use it and it's down. Or it's not down, but it's like there's too many users I can't log in right now. <laughs> so that that would have been really bad um, to do that uh, today. But it's a really cool tool. I was talking with the chat. Some really interesting answers. I find like it's it's kind of limited at a certain point um, on how deep you can go with that. Some some responses feel very prepared in a certain way you can't go beyond like for example asking what's how will ai impact uh, society and uh, what else is there uh, in here rich no but off offsetting costs yes okay yeah well that should be the minimum right if you as a business you need to have more than offsetting the cost to stay alive uh, but that's a good starting point because a lot of uh, a lot of businesses make a minus, right? They they don't even get into offsetting the costs. Um, what does every mid journey make? What does every use mid journey to make? I'm making a comic for a school project. Oh, it's also interesting. What kind of things are you doing as a business? Because of course, there's different things, right? So the most thing I'm talking today, well, which is basically most of businesses, either you sell a product or you sell a service, right? There's not really much else you can do in a business. Um, money can't buy happiness, but it can help you be miserable in more comfort. <laughs> well, if you think about it, everything that makes you happy is something you get for money. So, hmm, right? Everything costs money. Even your kids cost money, right? So there's nothing for free. Your cat costs money. Um, so, yeah. It's there's a connection, right? Because we set it up that way, not because it has to be that way. Although we pay with money what would usually be energy, but it's easier to have to store that kind of uh, like work energy in the form of money. Hi, hello, <laughs> saying hello to some people. Hi, Doctor Who. Hi, uh, Paolo. How are you doing? How Wolfman? How Emmanuel? Uh, sorry, hi, not how. Hi. <laughs> Oh my God, I'm an idiot. Okay, there we go. Uh, hi, Mildred. Hi, men, ma mains, mains? I don't know. Okay. All right. So, um, hi, Van Eng England. Hi. I think I've never read that before. Uh, okay. So, uh, let's let's start out uh, very simple with... Uh, I actually made a list. What's the first point in my list here? Um... Oh yeah, uh, uh, let's before before I start with the list. Uh, um, so it, this is about um, AI art as much as it's about any other business because the interesting thing about business is it's just about selling things, right? So it does really not matter what you sell. If you sell food or a car or art or it, it, it's all the same thing. It's everything is the same thing because the only thing you try to achieve is that you want to offer a good or a service to another person and hopefully you want to buy that. And this is the same for everything. So you can apply that. This is why you see people going from business to business and uh, one time they are the boss of Nike and then next time they are the boss of Mercedes because it really doesn't matter what you sell 
only that you know how to build a business, right? So you can sell basically everything, right? And this is this is classic example. Oh, but uh, the the fridge, can you sell a fridge on the North Pole? Yes, you can sell a fridge on the North Pole, right? The the reason why you can do that is because you figure out what does the customer need, right? So yeah, it, it's cold on the North Pole, but keeping stuff cool is not about cold; it's about temperature, and that's a different thing, right? So if you go to the customer and say, well, okay, it's it's nice you're in the North Pole, and you can keep things cold, but they are all at the same temperature. That's a problem, right? So you come home, your beer is frozen, your wine is frozen, your baby food is frozen, the steak is frozen, maybe that's good, the ice cubes are frozen, maybe that's good, but the, the ice cream is way too hard. Uh, you can't drink your beer, it's it's dead because it's frozen, so there's no fizzy any stuff in, uh, in it anymore. So all of that is bad. So you probably want to buy a fridge. And maybe I can sell you a really good fridge because you want to do other cool stuff with it, uh, right? So for all you gourmet stuff, for the maybe for the cigars, maybe for the wine, you want to have different temperature levels, stuff like that. So let's talk about different options of what we have as fridges and see what you need. And then I'm going to sell you some, maybe one fridge, maybe two fridges. I would suggest two fridges because you want to deep fry, uh, not deep fry, you want to like freeze stuff and then also have a family fridge in your kitchen, right? So that's two. And already you have sold two fridges to one person at the North Pole, right? So it's, it's all about what does the person need? That's the, that's the first thing about business. Okay, let's, um, <laughs> where's my, where's my chat window? There we go. So I can see your feedback um, on how you understand that, right? And this is, this is already the main problem that people are having is understanding that um, a business is about the need of the customer. It's not about what you want to do. It's not about what you want to sell. It's about what does the customer want or need, right? Because if you have something that nobody wants, it's hard to sell. This is why artists are poor often, because they do stuff without thinking about who wants to buy it. They do it because they enjoy doing it, but nobody else cares about that stuff, right? So they are poor and they never thought about, hey, how, how can I sell that? Often they also don't want to do that. Um, so yeah, but then, then you can't be surprised about nobody buying that stuff, right? Um, so, so that makes a lot of sense. So, um, and this, this is basically uh, the, the, the what this is about is business mindedness, and that is something you can learn, right? Is there's some people, of course, like in everything in life, they are very skilled. Um, which is not you, I can guarantee that to you right now, because you wouldn't be here if you would be super business minded and already know a million ways to make money. So, um, learning, and I have to learn it too, right? is completely okay right so that's that's absolutely okay don't worry about that uh, there's nothing wrong with that we all have to learn the stuffs in life that's important reading writing math doing business most people don't learn how to do business and then um, they are uh, employees which is also good right um, which some employees need to know how to do business I'm not saying nobody knows but most people don't want to do that um, now if you came here, this is two things, two things, by the way. If you came here to expect a blueprint that you can follow step by step and that blueprint makes you rich, if you look for a blueprint, you have an employee mindset, not a self-employed mindset. You don't want to do your own thing. You want to follow the steps from another person. That's already bad. If that is what you expect, you better search for a job because then you need someone to tell you what to do. That, that's not a good start. That's not a good start. Uh, and the other thing is, if, you, if your mindset is, how can I get the money as quickly from the pocket of the customer into my own pocket, you shouldn't be in business either. You actually you shouldn't interact with customers at all if that is your idea of business. Um, your idea of business, first and foremost, is always, 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 how can I help the customer to achieve their, like overcome their problem? Because the customer always has a problem and you probably or hopefully have the solution for that. And that is what business is, right? That is what every business is about. Um, I, you could probably not come up with any kind of business that is not trying to solve a problem for the customer, right? Even if people like, oh, corporates are so bad and business is so bad. No, they try to solve problems, right? Even if you see it in a different way, right? Um, okay, uh, let's have a look at the chat real quick before I go here on with my monologue <laughs> because this is supposed to be more interactive. Um, 
put your profits in cryptocurrency. Don't do that. No, that's a shitty idea. Don't put it in cryptocurrency. Maybe a small, small, small percentage of that, but don't the rest of it. No, cryptocurrency is way, way, way too risky. It might be a good investment. It might be a shitty investment. You don't know. It's a very, very, very high risk investment because it's spun to nothing. It's it's connected to absolutely nothing. And that is what makes it high risk, right? There's other things that are connected as the more things it is connected to, the safer it is afterwards, right? But also the slower moving it is, right? So if you see high movement, high profit, which is called volatility, right? Um, that is usually a bad thing unless you know what you're doing. And most people don't know what they're doing. Even the experts don't know what they're doing. This is why, uh, well, they invest other people's money, not their own money, right? If you go to a bank, they don't invest their own money. They ask for your money to invest and they make money on the fees of selling you the stocks, right? Okay, anyways, um, how do we go on from here? What's the next comment? Um, I'm going to lay a, a path to you and call, uh, follow. What? There are nearly 8 billion people. Would Who wouldn't happily hang? What? I sorry, I need my glasses for that. <laughs> it's or wait a second. I can I can do this a little bit bigger here. There we go. I'm going to lay a path to you. Call can all follow. There are nearly eight billion people who would happily hang work on their wall if they can afford it. Yes, that is a good point. If you can't wait for work to stop and holiday and vacation to start don't start a business because if you don't think working is fun and you want to work um why do you want to have your own business right that that's not good but but the difference is if you work for other people it's not that much fun because it's not your own dreams but if you work for yourself that is your own dreams that's the bit that's the big difference right so usually if i if i talk with someone who's an employee they're always about oh my boss is stupid and i hope my vacation starts soon and i can't wait for uh, going to the bar and uh, uh i want to just like go home and do stuff that that's that's employee talk you don't hear that from people who are self-employed if you talk to people who are self-employed they're like hey I, I can't wait to get that next project started and there's this thing i want to do and there i have this idea i wish that they had like 50 hours so i can like just do this stuff right or i i wish i have more energy to do all these things because they're excited about it because it's their dreams right so there's a huge difference between these two things so there, there's work and there is doing your own thing. I, I don't work in that sense. I do my own thing, right? Of all, like the YouTube channel stuff, it's a lot of work to do it, but it doesn't feel like work to me, right? Because I enjoy doing it. So that's a different thing. I never think about when I do I get off work because I never get off work, right? There's no, there's no, uh, how do you call that actually in English? Um, getting off work is... Uh, I, you know what I mean, right? Or vacation or stuff. You see, I'm in Bangkok right now. I'm not on vacation. I'm working, right? <laughs> because I don't take vacation. From what? From my life? That's not possible, right? Okay. Um, anyway. <laughs> I can sell to his friends. <laughs> okay. Uh, what else do we have here? Um when we when you do what you love you will never work another yeah that's true if you do what you love you're not working right um handmade watercolor you make handmade watercolor or watercolor paintings you make watercolor that's interesting ah you have a loyal following that is very good that is really good okay i'm always happy working yeah you see absolutely Yeah, YouTube is a good start. This is uh, YouTube is the the um, the the free part of the business, right? So there's a lot of business part to that, but YouTube is the free part of that, where you give out to the people first, and then you get something in return. But you give a lot more than you get in return, which is absolutely okay because that's a different kind of business concept, right? In the past, it was about how much can I get from the time I spend. Now it is how much time can I spend to get something, right? Uh, so you want to give first and then get something. But it's, a, it's a different, it kind of returned, right? Okay, let's go back to the basics of business, right? 
So um, there's two things about business. Uh, first of all, business is like riding a bike. That is an easy thing to understand. So um, what that means is you need to learn, and this is by experience. Um, there's also some know-how involved in the different levels of, of, of doing business, but most of it is experience. So that is the most important thing you need to do is try out different things, very small things where you don't risk much, where you just see if you like it. You just tap a little bit, you know, uh, your fingers, get your fingers wet a little bit, try to see, do I actually like doing that, right? Being a photographer or like doing designs for people or uh, coaching people, teaching people. There's a lot of different, like, for example, a lot of my money in AI art comes from teaching you with the YouTube videos, right? Because I like teaching people, right? So it, it, it you figure out what you like, try that out and see what works as a business and also try out different methods of doing business. How can you get into the business? How can you sell to that? For example, um, a lot of people like um, to have a, a, a customer and then close the deal and then find the next customer. They enjoy that. I don't. I like loyalty. I like loyal customers that come back to me um, because I enjoy to work with people I, I like, right? So for me, it's a different kind of set of what I do, how I reach out to people, like, for example, with the channel, right, to build a community. That's kind of a nice feeling for me. If you don't want to work with people over time, it doesn't make sense for you to build a community, which is is not my uh, kind of concept, right? Um, so there's different kind of things and you have to learn them through experience and through making mistakes. So don't put all of your eggs in the first basket you ever do with the first business and you invest all of your money and you put all of your hopes and dreams in it because it probably is going to die or it's going to run really bad because you don't have any experience or you're getting too tricked out of your money or stuff like that. So start very small at the start, make a very little like test for that. Maybe ask your, not, not friends or family, don't f forget about them with business because they always want to have that stuff for free but uh, find one or two people to work with and see how that goes right if you enjoy that if you can make money if they pay enough if everything runs good and then you can scale up and make it bigger so that's the first part the second part the second um a way you need to think about business is business is like dating, right? It's even called a relationship. You have a customer relationship. You have a business relationship. It's really like that. And people will tell you if they have a business partner, it is like a marriage because you're very close with them and you share the bank account and everything, not the bank account, but you know, the business bank account, right? Everything is together with that person. So like with the customer, it's the same thing, right? Um, and so this is a classic mistake I see a lot of people make is they barge into your life like, hey, I'm the best thing you've ever seen. You need to buy that stuff. I'm so great. I'm so awesome. I give you the best thing ever. And already you're turned off because that person is super annoying, stuff like that. Imagine going into a date like that, right? You come to the date, the person doesn't know you and you're already planning kits and saying how awesome you are and that you're the perfect guy ever and she she or he will never need another person or never even look at another option because you are the only like God sent option. You would be super turned off by that, right? That would be super stupid, right? So what, what do you want to do? In a date, of course, you want to listen. You want to find out who is the other person. Do we actually match? Does it make sense to be together? Do we have things that we enjoy together? Do we have things where we want to help each other, right? So um, if that's not the case, by the way, don't go into a relationship. That's very easy, right? It's very, if you think about that way, it's very easy to understand. Um, first of all, find out if the customer fits you and if you fit the customer. And if both of that happens, you can slowly reach out and think, hey, maybe we should do something together, right? Don't go in there and think, hey, uh, because this this bullshit you say, um, this bullshit you see in movies about always be closing and go in there very aggressive and try to beat down the customers, that is not business. That is not business. These people are jerks and everybody hates them. And you try, you want to stay as far away from these kind of people as you can. In some businesses, it's really hard to do that because you're kind of uh, required to have someone. And most of the people in that area are jerks in that, in that, in that, 
field of work. Uh, you probably know who I mean, right? That the kind of salespeople who try to just force feed you their super stupid updates, uh, sorry, upgrades. Um, but in most of the other business, you try to have a nice relationship, right? Um, anyways, <laughs> so social distance in that way, right? With with business. <laughs> You need to do that with business too. Just like give it some time and listen, listen, open your ears. It's really important. Anyways, um, let's see what the chat says. One second. Discord community doing comics with AI. What's the me? What's the name? Huh? Oh, maybe I I, I missed the the uh, message before that. Oh, oh, yeah, there's the message. Okay. <laughs> Not to distract. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so that's that's basically the starting point. Are you selling any merchandise here on YouTube? I don't sell merchandise because so far I don't believe in physical products. Uh, because most of the of the money goes to other people and I don't like that. I don't like to share my money for things that I don't believe in. So um, if you have a shirt, so many, so much money goes into the shirt itself and the printing and the shipping and the returning and the blah, blah, all those kind of things. I don't like that, right? If I, if I work for something, I want to have almost all of the money that is made in that process, right? I don't want to like have a, a huge, uh, like, giving money to all kinds of people just because and then you buy a shirt and you think hey i support this channel i just bought a third a shirt that's really expensive like 20 bucks and then i get two bucks from that right or three bucks well what i'm doing with that right if you give me 20 bucks i want to have 18 of that at least right or maybe i don't know let's say 17 <laughs> but not two or not three right anyways okay um so how how do we go on from here um, should we go to the next point? Do you want to ask me something? Is there is everything clear so far from what I'm saying? Um, because these are kind of very important steps at the beginning, right? Uh, from 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 doing business, right? So start small. That's the first one, and uh, make your experience, make your extent, make your mistakes in small ways at the beginning, and then also understand that business is like a relationship. It's like dating, and, and you try to find people who, who fit to you, right? So that's, that's how we have come so far. Um, the taxman gets a share of everything. Yes, that is a very important part, right? If you make money at the beginning, you need to save at least 30% because that is what this, the government and the social services want to have from you, at least 30%. Because otherwise you spend all your money. And by the way, even if you spent all the money and you think, hey, I spent all the money, I didn't make any gains on that, you still have to pay because the social services don't give a fuck about if you spend your money. They want the money, right? For your, uh, what is it called? Um, insurance, like health insurance, for your retirement, for the social stuff. They want your money. They don't, they don't care if you have it or not. And they will put you in jail if you don't have it, right? They they have no cool about that. They are worse than the mafia, right? And there's no stopping them, right? They will find you wherever you hide. If you don't have the money for your retirement, they will make you retire in jail. <laughs> All right. So you need to save that money. It's really important. A lot of people make that mistake. And then they have um, suddenly, uh, they, they have to take up a credit or stuff like that, right? It's not good. That's not great. What um, uh, is uh, is is only needed as well? It depends on your country. You have to ask your uh, tax uh, accountant about that. In my area of the world, you have to go over a certain amount, which is pretty much uh, for a for a business before you even have to ask for what. But before that, the cool thing is you can still like make the prices as if there was a what, but you write that you don't ask for what, because afterwards you don't want to spike the prices afterwards. You don't want to make the price higher suddenly because you have to pay what, right? So that, that wouldn't be good uh, for the customer. Like let's have, let's say you have a product that is 10 bucks and then suddenly you ask 12 bucks, your customers will be upset and a lot of customers will leave. So that's not good. So ask for 12 from the start and then when the VAT comes in, the requirement for it, you still ask 12, but you give the two to the government, right? Easy. Okay. Mm. Okay. So how do we, um, what is the next point we want to talk about, right? Uh, let me see. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Uh, before we go into researching, 
uh, there's also, I think I talked about that already a little bit, but uh, to understand what business is, it's, under, it's really, 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 really important to understand. There is two reasons why every transaction happens. Either the customer doesn't know how to do that, that happens sometimes, but more often the customer doesn't want to do it. Laziness, convenience, that's a big selling point. Being lazy, being like wanting convenience for yourself, that is the main selling point for most transactions. Think about what you buy throughout the day. You could do a lot of those things yourself, right? You could learn how to do it. It's not hard. With the food, with the drinks, with stuff like that, making a coffee. You buy coffee probably every day or almost every day, but right you have a shop making coffee they brew they like make the water hot and they mix it with the coffee and they do like it's an artistic thing and like oh look i'm a barista and suddenly you have paid five bucks for something it costs maybe 10 cents to make right so um and this is because you're too lazy to bring your own coffee to work and then heat it up at work you don't want to do that right so you go to the coffee store and they sell your coffee right by the way here's the thing and this is because a lot of people, and I was afraid about that too. You start a business, you think, oh, I need to have skills. I need to be good. I need to this and that, right? Um, strictly speaking for business, that's not necessary. People pay for everything um, if they don't want to do it yourself. Um, you can literally, literally, it's not a joke. You can literally make money doing absolutely nothing. That is like, you would think one of the best jobs in the world, actually not so great. Um, one example for that would be to be a, a line waiter, right? So you wait in line at the Apple store for three days because some other guy who doesn't have the time or doesn't want to sit there wants a new iPhone. So he says, hey, I pay you 300 bucks to sit there for, I don't know, five days. You do it. You do absolutely nothing there. You bring your, your, I don't know, your iPad. You watch some Netflix for three days. And then the guy comes around or the woman or whoever, and he pays you and you go home. You did nothing, absolutely nothing. And you made 300 bucks, right? I don't know how much they get paid actually, but you made some money for doing nothing. It doesn't require any skill, but you can still make money. It's not like you can do it every day, but you see there is examples where you do nothing. Like you could also say doing nothing is being a, a guard in a museum. You just stand around and look if people touch the paintings. That's not exactly doing a lot, right? Um, so yeah, you know what I mean. Anyways. <laughs> Okay. Um, yeah. So convenience is a pretty big point. Think about that. What do people not want to do and also what people can't do, right? If it's about what people can't do, you need to have the skill. That's a very important part. And I see a lot of people trying to sell stuff they don't actually know how to do. That's not a great idea. Um, so if you don't know how to do things, think about um, what, what laziness can you make a business out of, right? So that's an easy thing to do. Um, okay, anyways, can you make money for nothing with cryptocurrency? Can we stop talking about cryptocurrency? That's just like a <laughs> such a such a fairy tale bubble. <laughs> anyways, okay. Um, test bad mattresses for a job. Mm, okay, well, there's hotel testers. There is like food testers, right? You can get paid for eating, for sleeping. You can get paid for anything in life. You just need to know how to sell that. By the way, um, let's. I, I go, I'm going off road here a little bit, but uh, one of the good things you can do in life is to whoop, to make your own job, right? You just go there to a company and say, "Hey, wouldn't you need that?" They they probably never thought about they might need that, and you say, "Hey, um, that would be maybe a good idea, right?" For example, a, a test shopper, right? I'm sure some guy or some woman or whoever, you know what I mean, went to a store and said, hey, you know what? I like to go shopping. How would it be for your business if I go to your different stores? As a shop, I just go shopping on your bill, of course. And then I, I write you about the experience that I had as a shopper. And so you're a test shopper. You just go shopping. <laughs> Of course, you need to like have a certain like list of things you're checking, but still you're going shopping, right? So you can make up jobs. I did that actually. I, I went to business and say, hey, uh, you, you, you need that kind of thing. And they say, yeah, just good idea. Let's try that, right? So yeah, that's possible. Mm. And the good thing is about making up your own jobs. You don't have a competition, right? If you make up your own services, 
there's nobody applying for it because it was never written out to anybody, right? Okay, uh, so let's get back to more uh, uh, substantial stuff here, maybe. Um, so how do you, what is the next point on my list? One second. Obviously mentioned, uh, uh, that's maybe, let, let's go a little bit into more substance here. So how do we actually find a good business? I think that's probably one of the biggest problems for most people is to see the opportunity. Now, one, one thing before I started is there is always opportunity. This is why employees can lose a job. If you're self-employed, you can't lose a job. You're always employed because you're self-employed. You can't fire yourself, right? So that sounds like a choke, but it isn't because even in the worst situation, you always need things for life. You need shelter, you need food, you need drink, you need medicine, you need clothing. There's always things people need, even if there's a catastrophe, even if there's a war. You see, like the first thing you see in these movies when it's about war is these black markets, right? Because people need stuff. So there's always ways to make money. Uh, so um, if you're looking for a job, the problem for you is there might not be a job. But if you're self-employed, you just make up the job. You're just looking around and say, hey, what do people read? Uh, sorry, what do people need right now the most? most how can i how can i make that happen how can i facilitate that right um and you just try to to figure out a way okay so um how do you figure that out uh and that is a lot that's a huge uh, problem for most people because what they do is they sit down and they try to think about good ideas oh boy <laughs> Do you not have good ideas? Nobody has. Don't worry about that. Nobody has good ideas. There's only some people who are really, really like business. They have just a, like a, a born into business sense and they can just make up stuff. Um, but usually what you want to do is to research. And the research sounds boring, but it's actually not. Um, so what you do is you go to where your customers are. And this today is awesome because it's online it's all online that's really cool people are giving you the information for free that information is 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 worth so much money and they're just giving away for free social media right oh the bliss of social media so what you do is you go to the different groups like facebook group is good discord reddit stuff like that and you read through the comments and you read into uh, what do people want? What do they have problems with? What do they need? What do they like not find a solution for? And you think about, can I maybe provide that? Am I a good solution for that? Could I help them in some way, right? So you can figure out, oh, there might be something a lot of people want to do, try to do, but there is nobody offering that. So that could be a good chance for you. But even better, there is someone offering it already, but you can still grab, you can nibble a little bit on that market. The, the positive thing about having already competition in a field is that the competition is already figuring out the problems for you. So can you look at their business model and what they do? And you can even pretend to be a customer or even become a customer of uh, off them for a short time just to figure out how they do what they do um, uh, and, and stuff like that right uh, and then you can just either let, like learn from the mistakes copy it a little bit build on that uh, make it better and also maybe do the things they can't do for the customers right because everybody has a different skill set everybody is tuned a little bit different so you do things probably in a different way than they would do it and boom there's already your business there's already the first thing you can try right um, all right, um, let's have a look at the chat. <laughs> Ask some questions if you have them, by the way. Um, your job is to disprove flat earth <laughs> and gender pronouns. Why? Why would you dis disprove that? Let people have some fun if they want to call you whatever, right? That, that's okay. You have a pronoun. This uh, let's let's go off road here for a second. I love it when people, especially like usually it's guys, old guys, people who think very manly of themselves, and they are like, oh, a pronoun. Why do you need a pronoun? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And they're not realizing they have a pronoun. How do you go to life? People call you Mrs. or they call you Mr. So let's have people call you Mrs. for a day and see how you like that, right? So you don't need a pronoun, you need a fucking pronoun. Don't don't tell me you don't need a pronoun. That's stupid, right? Let other people have a pronoun they want. If they want to be a unicorn, let them be a unicorn. What is that? What's what, How is it your problem what they want to be in life, right? Maybe you can be in the business of making up pronouns, right? You're the pronoun creator. 
maybe that that could be a presence, right? That could be maybe you can make it into fancy designs, right? That could be cool. There's there's money in that. I'm pretty sure there's money in that. Uh, you if you have like you can print T-shirts, make up your pronoun, or I make up pronouns for you, and then we we make a cool design for that, right? That could be cool, right? That could be money. Anyways, there we go. Um, what were we talking about? <laughs> I forgot what we're talking about. Um, yum, 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 yum. Ask me some questions. Uh, so we talked about where to find that kind of information, right? Okay. Um, so you figure out some figure out some ideas, and the most important thing. This is the next point here. By the way, how how long have you been talking so far? Um, for thirty seven minutes. Wow. Okay. Time flies. Anyways. Um, the next thing you need to figure out is, do you actually like to do it? Because in most cases, for most people, business runs the same and it's a slow burn to get started. So if you don't enjoy doing the things, if you don't have like a, a list of ideas on what you can do with these kind of things, you're probably running out, you're burning out, right? And also don't focus about the money with business. Focus about the thing you want to do. Is it something you like doing? If it's something you enjoy doing for you and especially for other people, if you don't enjoy that, um, that's already a bad start, right? So um, maybe, maybe don't make your hobby the job. This is what a lot of people say. And some people really like that because then they do what they love. Um, which sounds good, but if you like have to do it, the thing about business is you have to do it whether you want it or not, right? So think about chocolate. Chocolate is nice, right? Most people like chocolate or think about ice cream, whatever. Ice cream has more flavors. Think about ice cream. So think about you have, you have to eat ice cream every day five times. You have to do it. No matter if you want ice cream or not, you have to eat ice cream every day five times. Now people, some people love ice cream and they would love to eat ice cream for the rest of their life five times a day. But for most people it would be like, ugh, ugh, I, I can't take it anymore. I want to have an ice cream maybe, I don't know, once, twice a week, right? But not five times a day. So think about a business of stuff that you like to do but um, that is not maybe the most uh, like the what you what you do to relax. That's that's maybe a good comparison. Uh, don't make a job about something you want to relax with. Make something about you want to engage with. That's probably a good. Um, that's a good. Um, uh, uh, a good uh, example here, right? Let's hide that comment here. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Did I miss something here? Uh, okay, anyways, what were I saying? Um, so for me, for example, I like to I like to figure out how things work and then share these ideas with other people. And of course, I like to hear myself talk. That's one of my favorite things is um, talking, talking about things, talking about interesting stuff. I, I do that all day long. Um, and I'm not getting tired of that, but I also don't do it as um, as uh, I don't do it to relax. I do it because it fires me up, right? So, so this is what I mainly do: is talking about things, right? That's that's my main job. Um, which also I do uh, uh, if you if you like for for my customers, right? There's like you, the community, but then there's also customers who book me, and then I consult them, right? So I help them. I'm doing basically the same thing, um, but for an hourly. <laughs> So that's the difference, anyways. Um, yeah. So uh, what what is the next thing here? Um, so uh, how how can I how can I say this in the best way? Uh, there's a there's a million ways to do to do business, right? So um, with AI art specifically, there is still a million ways to do that. So probably the main thing you're thinking is, hey, I make AI pictures and then I'm going to still make photos. You can make photo courses. You can be an expert in lighting, right? You can be a person who finds customers for photographers. You can be an ad agency that works with photographers. It's still in the area of photography, right? You still do pictures um, or work with pictures. You can make a stock page, right? Uh, there's a lot of different ways to do things. And the same thing goes for AI. So what is it you want to do with that? Don't just think about, hey, I make some pictures with the uh, AI 
generator and then I sell that. Uh, first of all, you're probably going to have a lot of competition right now. Um, but also, uh, it, it's uh, because of the competition, is there a lot of money in that? That's also the question. So how could you specialize? How could you do something that people are willing for that is more... Um, more specific, more amazing, uh, more different, right? Because, for example, in a lot of in a lot of cases, people would pay more for the knowledge on how to do something than for the actual product, especially if they want to do it themselves, right? Or if they want to build a business themselves with it, uh, they need the information more than they need the product. This is why right now we are in the in the in the information age, right? So um, for 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 YouTube or or things like that. The, the money is not in the videos, on hosting the videos. That is not what YouTube is making money with. This is where they're losing money on. What they make money with is all the data that you give them on what you like, how long you watch something, all these kind of statistics. And then they can sell that to the advertisement uh, companies, right? Uh, to, to, make, uh, to make advertisement on that. Because that is the important part of that. The, that, that YouTube has videos. That is just, this is just by chance. They could do anything else. It doesn't matter as long as they get the data and as long as people want to look at it and they can sell advertisement. So um, YouTube is an advertisement platform. It is not a video platform. It's just video is the way to, to do the business for them, right? So that's the important part. <laughs> Anyways, so think about the whole cosmos of things that are out there and where you can fit in with that right and for me and there's this again there's people who do it differently um i want to be ideally either the only person in front of my customer or one of the few people in front of my customer so this is why i'm not on stock pages or other pages like that i tried skillshare for a bit i hated it um, you could say, of course, YouTube is a is a place where you are one amongst millions of creators. And that is true in a certain way. But the difference is on YouTube, everybody builds their community. So even though you have a million people making videos, every one of these is living in a small bubble, in a small universe with their own community. So I'm still in front of my community, not in front of all of YouTube. Because all of YouTube is not interested in my content, you are interested in my content. Content, right so that's a huge difference if you're on a stock page like iStock or Adobe stock or wherever you are one of millions of creators out there right there is no differentiation between that right um, and you it's it's really hard to build a following on there maybe you can I never tried that actually uh, but I don't think you can because you go on stock pages and you search for the images and every time you search for different kind of creators uh, because you just search for you don't you need a Santa image or whatever so it's really hard to to build a loyal customership and also you can't connect to them right I don't think you can you don't get their email addresses you you don't there's no like subscription to you specifically right so there's a problem uh, the chat is going really fast right now let me see what you are actually writing um prices for a few years until sales are established it will be introduced what oh okay I I, I let me <laughs> I will put on the glasses now to read the comments a little bit faster. One second. Uh, if you use AI. Well, if you if people attack you, they are not your customers. You can ignore them, right? Ignore people who are not your customers. If they don't pay you, they oh, don't you you owe them nothing. That's really important. It's also important, by the way, to say no to customers. Don't take every... Like, when you start out, you think you need to offer everything and you need to accept everybody as a customer. That's not true. Find customers who want to be your customers and find customers who don't haggle about a penny. If you have someone, this is a very good advice, if you find a customer and they start to haggle about individual dollars or pennies, just kick them. Just say, sorry, um, it's a really... And, and don't say, sorry, I don't want to work with you. That's the worst thing you can do. Always, always say, I love your project. I wish I had time for it, but I'm just... My schedule is full, so I have to forward you to colleague. That's that's the best thing to do. Don't say, I don't want to work with you. Always say, I love your project, but sorry, I, I don't have the time for it right now. Right? Um, okay, anyways. Adobe banned AI art? Really? 
but they have AI in their own software. Uh, well, that's a different thing, though. Okay, anyways, <laughs> they, they will bring it back. Don't worry about that. Um, see it as art prices. The price, the price is in question. Now that's, that's um, Olivia set for life, lucky man. Well, my channel will die at some point. I'm pretty sure about that. But I'm also sure that I will, unless I get like brain problems, I will find another thing to do. Um, because for me, I, I've done it for so long. It's always, I always find something. <laughs> something to sell to someone, especially because I'm good at talking. So yeah, that, that makes it a lot easier. Um, created by human artist class is something created by human uh -huh. <laughs> old man with glasses yeah these are two dollar glasses two dollars right <laughs> you can never be um to 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 what would you say to to rich to be frugal <laughs> why would i buy ray-bans if i can have two dollar glasses from my favorite uh, like dollar store and they were great they were like, amazing yeah, why would I give a hundred bucks for just the Ray Ban logo? I don't. I want. I don't want to do that. Um, uh, how do you know if it's made with AI? Well, you can see it right right now. It's AI is not so good right now that you wouldn't spot the difference to a to a, a actual artwork. You might need to hold an actual artwork next to it to see the difference. Uh, so that's true, but um, it's not good enough right now to compete with actual artists so um yeah uh you also have to know how saturated your market is knowing how much competition yeah that is true so if your market is oversaturated then um you can't really do uh you well if uh, that's a good, uh, let's talk about that for a second. If your market is oversaturated, that means you can't do it in the same way as the other people do, but you can do it in a new way, right? So you can figure out, okay, people are getting sick of this kind of thing. What else could I do, right? What else is there to um, sell to the same customer base with the same need, but maybe a little bit different, right? So, uh, for example, if you say, well, there's there's a Starbucks on every corner. Um, I can't do my coffee shop in a Starbucks style because Starbucks is overwhelmingly powerful. They will just kill my business. What can I do that is different? What do people think about Starbucks? They think it's too expensive. They think it's too corporate. They think they're sellouts. They think they destroy the rainforest, whatever. So um, let's figure out, can I make a business of the people who are against that, right? So you want to have like bio coffee that is saving the rainforest where you buy, I don't know, you buy parts of the rainforest, everybody buy every time someone buys a cup or whatever, you know, you make readings about philosophy in your coffee, stuff like that for artists, for intellectuals, for creative people, you make a meeting place for them, a hub, you make like um, an event where you have an open mic where people can talk, stuff like that. That might be interesting, stuff you don't find on Starbucks. And then you have a different business. It's all it's still selling coffee, but it's different coffee, and it comes with a different concept behind that. Uh, so, for example, in Vienna, we have a very famous coffee store. It's called Phil, and Phil is for, as the name says, people like philosophy, art background. It's a bookstore where you can buy coffee, but not a bookstore like you have right now with all the bookstores who sell coffee. They are mainly a coffee store where you have book readings and you have talks and you have music and you have interesting people. And it's attractive to people who are creatives and intellectuals in a certain way, you know, to, to go there to meet like-minded people, right? So they have their niche. And if you want that, if you enjoy these kind of people, you go to that cafe, not to another cafe, right? So that's, that makes a lot of sense, right? And we have another cafe. It's called um, the, uh, what is it called? Um... Topkino, actually. It's called Topkino. So it's a cinema, but it is also a bar. And um, they have only or make they have only independent films. So if you are again an artsy person, creative background, you want to meet people like that, you go to that bar, to that cafe, um, to meet people, you can hang out there all night. And if you want, um, you can watch an indie movie, right? Or sometimes they have like viewings where they have the cinema open and you can watch other things. You just go in. Uh, so that's more um, like for the creative type, right? So you just figure out what is the community, how do they want to connect? Like for example, it's also this kind of, in recent years, it became uh, famous to make cat cafes, right? Um, so 
for example, you could make an AI art cafe, right? It's for people who like AI art. They want to connect. You have, uh, you can uh, like maybe have computers where everything is set up or the, you can show them how to do that or you have pre-downloaded the different models so they do, don't have to do that if they have slow internet. They can just borrow your uh, your drives or you have a local server where you can download all of the models uh, in, in a second. Uh, stuff like that and then you can meet and there's talks and people like talk about the future of AI and about AI art and the new concepts they share the models they have trained you make a competition every week about the best model about the best AI art stuff like that and you have a coffee shop that is about AI art and I think that could be really interesting right um, maybe you could even market uh, like partly co-working store uh, space or something for AI artists um, so uh, try to have like two businesses. If one business doesn't work so well, the other business still works, right? So you have, if you combine these two and maybe co-working and a coffee shop is a good combination, but it could also be something else, right? You can you can be a computer bookstore and uh, uh, AI coffee uh, space. So that could be nice, right? So there's always kind of ways, although this is something where you have to invest a lot of money to, to rent a cafe, to buy all that stuff. So I would personally suggest if you get started with any kind of business idea and you have no business experience, um, try to have something where you don't have to invest a lot of money. Or if you invest money, only invest the money you can afford to lose. That's really important. Don't take up huge credits that you can never pay back because you trust that it will work. Um, if you have no experience at all, right? If you have a lot of experience, you can do that, no problem. But if you have no experience, don't do that. You will probably like fail with the business and then you lose the money, right? So don't, don't be the, how is it called? Like the <laughs> lucky... I don't know what it's called. Hunter of the luck. What, what is it called? A <laughs> uh, 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 luck warrior, we say in German. A Glücksritter. <laughs> it's actually called that. Glücksritter. Uh, uh, yeah. Anyways. <laughs> mm. Okay. Uh, what else? Oh, by the way, uh, one book I can really suggest to you is called The Virgin Way. It's by Richard Branson, the guy who started Virgin. He made a lot of different brands, a lot of different businesses. He's absolutely very, very positive um, about things. Um, and he's very inspirational in his books. That's good. So you get this kind of, ah, yeah, I, I want to start it too. It sounds so amazing kind of thing. Uh, what else do we need to talk about here? Let me look at my, at my magic list here. Um... Oh, yeah, that's a good point. I, I, I avoided it before because it was a little bit too theoretical, maybe. Uh, but I think now it fits very well. So you have figured out what do the customers want and how can you build your niche by looking at different things online and figuring out uh, what people are interested in, what they have problems with. Now, for a lot of people, it is very difficult to get in front of other people and ask them for money. Now, the good thing is today with social media, you don't have to get in front of other people. Um, you just make a page. So the page asks for you, but still asking for money from other people often or, or feels awkward and often you ask less than you actually um, worth because um, you're just shy about that. It doesn't feel good, right? Again, it has a, a very like uh, connection to dating that you are, you don't know how beautiful you are to other people and you're shy about that, right? Um, so that might be a problem. And uh, one thing that uh, I find for that is uh, imagine your customer to be, and you should always actually do that, imagine your customer to be your best friend. Not the customer being the best friend, but think about the best friend you have in real life. Who is that? Who is that person, right? Is it an old friend from school? Is it your it could be your mother. I don't know. You know, who else, Who whoever is the, the person you like most in life, think about that person when you think about the customer and think, okay, how can I help them? Because you don't want to hurt that person and that person has a problem. How can I help that person? How can I explain that person what the solution is? What kind of like thing could I do to help them? Because that is what business is about like i said and it makes it so much easier because you always want to help your friends um to do something for other people so if you imagine while selling to another person hey this is my best friend i want to help them 
um, you have a much easier way to talk to the other person rather than thinking about the business and how to sell the deal because that always feels bad. Um, just for some people like it, but most people don't like it, right? Um, okay, so that that's a that's a kind of an easy trick. First of all, to get into a good, uh, like, uh, lasting business mind, and also to to get less nervous about your business and about the interaction with the customer, right? And this is like really is always the case even like i've done business for so long and still if i get in front of a customer i'm i'm i feel shy i'm like oh maybe i don't know what they need maybe i'm i'm suck at uh, they i'm i am embarrassing myself because they want stuff and i can't offer it which is okay it's absolutely okay if you can't offer it you just say well that's awesome but i'm not an expert in that area i i, I can teach you this thing but not the other thing so i can't help you with that right that that's okay and they will understand that you can't do everything in life right so um yeah but of course we're still shy about that okay <laughs> stop spamming who is spamming business on the metaverse are we still about cryptocurrency and all that bullshit can we stop with that? American actor, comedian. I think someone needs a timeout here. Where's the timeout? There, put on a timeout. Okay. <laughs> Little break for the dude. Oh, it deleted the message. I didn't know it deleted the message. Probably for the best right now. I hope it didn't ban you, right? Timed out for 300 seconds. Eh, a little bit short, but that's okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Anyways, there we go. Um, so yeah, what else? Uh, right, uh, ask me something in the chat. This this is uh, this is supposed to be an interactive thing. So I talked for so long. Um, hype the like button. Yes, that would be good. Hype the like button so more people, more people can see that. What else can I talk uh, to tell you about this kind of thing? Right, a lot of that comes from experience. Um, I, I don't want to give you specific examples because like um, it you need to figure out what kind of business works for you and how you want to interact with your customers, right? Um, but I can always tell you it's like the biggest part of being in a business is to listen to the customer. What do they need? What do they want? Are you the right person for them? So, and uh, like, also, this is like, uh, you will, you will, you will see this again and again. Um, what, what I was about to say, uh, in, in books, for example, they say 80, 20, like you should listen for 80% of the time. And that's actually true. A lot of the stuff you find in books is true. If you know what it means, that's is a bit of the problem is, um, that, um, it, it, uh, uh, it doesn't make sense to you at first. Uh, but going to a customer and just asking them, what do you need? What is the problem? Send me a list of the questions you have. Send me a list of the requirements you have so I can figure out a solution for you. And then we can talk about that, right? That uh, might be a good, um, that might be a good solution for that, right? So it's because this is insight for you is really important into the customer, into their need, into how you can prepare the product for them. So it is a good service for them. So this is why this listening is so important, right? The sales stuff that you see in movie, uh, that is just for people who only chop as sales. They have, they don't build the product. They don't do the service. They don't provide anything. They only are the selling people, right? And they are professional salespeople. And that is, I think, a very shitty job. I don't want to have it. Um, a nerve-wracking job, unless you really enjoy doing that. But um, this is what you see in the movies. It has nothing to do with business. Most of business is done in a different way. This is only sales. So don't don't think you have to, like, like uh, have an avalanche, have a tsunami of arguments for your customer. You really don't. The customer has a requirement, they have a need, they have a problem, and they are happy to find someone who will solve that problem for them at, of course, a good rate and with the quality they expect. So that makes sense, right? But they are happy to find someone. But the customer don't know you. 
and the customer needs to give you money and money is the one thing that makes everything in our life work so you want to keep your own money you don't want to give it away so there's a huge risk for the customer so you want to lower that risk by understanding the customer so for the customer the problem is he wants help but he's afraid he will get tricked right and you want to help but uh, you don't want to come off as a jerk who just wants to have the money, right? So yeah, that's a kind of interaction. That's again where we come back to dating. You go slowly, slowly, you try to figure out what is good, what is nice for the customer. Is it a fit? Is it not a fit? And then at a certain point, you can make the offer, right? In a date, it's probably the end of the evening and say, hey, should we share a kiss before you go home? Or maybe even a better deal, I don't know. <laughs> depends on how good the date runs but um you at that point you make your offer right you don't go in there not knowing the person and say hey how about mm, you know that that's not a good uh, like it sometimes works uh, it depends on the need, how big the need is but you know what i mean for a usual date that's not the way it goes right and it's also for business not the way it goes sometimes it goes like that sometimes you meet someone and say hey i've waited for you come on let's do the business but it literally, in both, right? <laughs> Even in dating, it's called doing the business. There's, you see how much connection is there, right? Yeah. But don't, don't go into business with dating books because dating books are all shit. They are all dog shit. Don't buy that stupid crap. You know, the only thing you need to do is to listen, open up your ears, and see what the other person requires. Is the only thing that's that's necessary. Okay. Um, do we have any questions here? Nobody? You're just talking about, uh, what, what is this one here? For example, Lewis says, I got here late, so maybe you cover this already, but what is the future of copyright issue facts for creators trying to sell AI images with no post-generation human editing? I don't know. I don't have a crystal ball. <laughs> there isn't even lawyers don't know yet. How would I know that? Um, I guess it's going to be sorted out in a certain way because the AI images are so different from what the artists are actually creating. Sometimes there's very, like if you if you really aim for that, to have a work for that looks exactly like from another artist, um, you could kind of achieve that, not really, but kind of achieve that with AI right now. But usually if you enter these artists' names, the work they look completely different, doesn't have anything to do with the artist. So how can it be protected by the artist if it doesn't look like that? Even if you would do it by hand, it wouldn't be protected if it's different enough. This is one of the like parts of the law. It, it depends on your country, right? But you can, of course, do the same thing. Like if you couldn't do the same thing, how is there more than one shop selling burgers? How is that possible? How is the Burger King and McDonald's and White Castle and uh, what else the others are called? They all sell burgers because you do a little bit different and then it's okay they all are fast food restaurants but they're all different a little bit right and that is what makes it legal right um are you aware of a tool that reads and detects the stable diffusion watermark no not really um yeah but greg rukowski if you look at his if you look at the works of him and what the AI is creating, I don't see much similarity. It is if you if you really tell me that the work that AI is creating looks exactly and has the same fidelity and artistic quality as the Greg Rukowski works, it doesn't. It's like night and day. It looks pretty, but it's not like a it's not like a masterpiece artwork that is actually artistically creative. This is what everybody is saying. AI is not creative. AI simulates creativity, but AI doesn't know what it's doing. AI is not intelligent, even if it's in the in the in the name. AI is not intelligent. It can't think about itself. You, you see, the, the thing is, there's two ways of creativity. One is the way you create something creative, and AI can't do that. And the other thing is how you perceive something creative. And this is what you can do. You look up in the sky and you say, oh, there's a bunny. It's a cloud. The cloud doesn't know it looks like a bunny, but you see a bunny. And when you look at AI art, you see something creative. The AI doesn't see something creative. There's nothing creative in there. You make up the creative part in your mind, in your head, because you say, oh, that inspires me. That's, that's a completely different thing, right? So there's not really... 
that much um, similarity between the actual works and the AI works, even though the AI works are pretty good, right? For what they are, not compared to human art, but for what they are, they are pretty good. Um, let's go back to business. Um, do you like, for example, write in the chat, write some ideas you have on doing business and please, please don't worry that people will steal your ideas. That's the, that's the biggest nonsense. I hate when people say that, oh, someone's stealing your idea. It's so hard to build a business. It would be nonsense for people. First of all, you probably don't have ideas that are worth stealing. Sorry if I say it like that, but it's probably true. Um, because unless you're a super experienced business person with a really good business mindset, your ideas are not so mind blowing that they are worth stealing. And even like if they are, it takes a lot of effort. Like, for example, um, do you think just because like you you can look at Facebook and how it works. Do you think you could build a Facebook that is as successful? Google tried it. They couldn't do it. They have the best people in the world to program things. They know how to uh, make all these kind of services. They have social media with YouTube and they failed miserably with their Google Plus service. They try to compete with Facebook because they don't know how to do that because it's not possible for them. They tried, but they failed. They can't do it, right? So even even if you have the idea and every ingredient of that idea, you still can't do it, right? Oh, I have a, uh, before we uh, come up with the ideas, send me some ideas and we can talk about that. Um, there's different levels of business. So that's the interesting thing. And there's also um, like, I, 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 I talked to someone who is working with uh, like, he's selling to corporations. He's doing business to business is what it's called, but he's selling to big corporations, Sony, Mercedes, all these kind of big brands, right? And he says, well, it doesn't make it, it there's no difference if you sell something for 10 bucks or 100,000 bucks. It's exactly the same process. Uh, you go in, you have a product, you have a service, you um, listen to the customer, you figure out a plan on how to set it up for the customer, and then you sell it. It doesn't matter what it costs, right? And that is true. The big difference is you need to know how to go down that route. That is the difference, right? So if you make uh, if you make a hundred bucks a day, or if you make a hundred thousand bucks a day, that only depends on how you set up your business, not on how amazing you are with business, right? People are not just because they are multimillionaires doesn't mean they are better at business, right? Um, so. If I would sell something for you, I could never, like maybe you're super rich, but I don't, like most people are not super rich, right? If I sell something to a customer, I couldn't make 100,000 in a day because the customer doesn't have 100,000 a day, so it's not possible. I can make 10 bucks, I can make 100 bucks, I can make 1,000 bucks maybe from that customer because they want to have something that is worth 1,000 bucks, right? But I couldn't make a 100,000, couldn't make a million. But you can do that if you sell to a company because the company has billions of, of dollars, right? Think about Elon Musk, right? If for him, 100,000 is like, uh, you know, sneezing. <laughs> it's nothing, right? So if you have a service and he really likes it, um, he probably say, yeah, okay, let's do that. Here's a hundred thousand. Let's make this happen. No problem, right? So it's it's only about who you sell to, and in in most cases, the big money is with the big businesses, right? Um, okay, let's look here if we have some um, if we have some ideas here that we can respond to. Um, so Westside Film says, well, I'm thinking of a business of creating custom checkpoints for clients and then sell them picture packs, picture packs to make them. What? Demand, themed picks, etc. Oh, I see. Okay. Um, could be, could be a good idea. I don't know if a lot of people who want the pictures would do that. I mean, it depends on who you sell it to, right? If it's for brands, for example, you train their like product or whatever, and then you create images with that, 
for the customer that could be great right i think a lot of like what we have right now is product pro, uh, photography or these 3d artworks about um uh, products that will be ai in the future so if you can do that for companies there's a lot of money in that you could also think about creating these checkpoints creating these models for them and then selling the model to them because you know how to train that and maybe you're specialized in a certain way like you focus on uh, for example, getting cars really, really, or sneakers, getting sneakers really, really right down to the detail, or you're really good at training models that have like uh, soft drinks with all the ice and the smoke and the water droplets on it and stuff like that, and actually looks and has the exact same colors you need, stuff like that. Like, for example, the thing, if you want to do it for advertisement is, could you get it down to the exact colors? Because that's a big requirement in, in, in advertisement. And then if you can, that is probably worth a lot of money if you you can sell that to to the people right you can sell them the models you can sell them the people uh the, the not the people sorry the, the the pictures um so that that could work if you figure out who likes that if it's individual customers like you want to do it for the 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 birthday party of little johnny um they probably not have enough money to pay you for the time you have to invest right because you have to think about that your time is valuable, especially if you're self-employed and you have to pay for everything in your life, right? Um, this is like, as an employee, you get so much from the company, they like, they bombard you with things they do for you, right? They give you a room, they give you the internet, they give you a computer, they give you a desk, they give you um, accounting, they give you uh, advertisement, they give you customer service, everything, and then you sit on your desk and you do your work. If you're self-employed, you have to do all of that or you have to pay for all of that yourself. So all of that needs to go into the into the, the, the money you ask from the customer. That's a very important thing that people often miss out on. And this is also where people are like, oh, how can it be that my company asked for 10,000 and I only get paid 500? Because the company has costs too. You think the whole building and all the stuff they have is for free? They have to pay for all of that. They have to pay for cleaning at night and security and all that kind of stuff, right? So that is, that is expenses, right? So yeah. <laughs> That's important. You have to think about that, right? And also, like, see what the rates are and then calculate how long you take. Let's say your rate is $100 an hour, right? And you take for the model to train and to figure out with the customer, sit down, getting the images, talking about the ideas, maybe training multiple models until the customer is happy. Uh, let's say you take, I don't know, 20 hours. How, how much is that? 2000 there you go, 2000 So if you have the birthday party for little Johnny, nah, they probably not want to spend 2000 on that. But if you have a company, they're like, eh, okay, 2000 who cares? Because they like, for them, it's an expense, right? And if they, if they make that kind of money, that might be nice. Anyways, <laughs> let's go. Um, I'm making a game now with the help of Stable Diffusion. Oh man, good luck with that. Doing video games is super hard. That is a very hard thing to do. Um, wait, I lost the, I lost the chat. Where is it? No, not the chat, but the message where I was. Um, I will start selling bath water for what? <laughs> For virtually AI girls. <laughs> By the way, it might sound like a choke. It's not a choke. Um, these kind of digital goods, they are being super big. They, they are very big in the future. Clothing, like you see it right now with all the, the companies out there. You can't go into a video game where they don't have skins, where they don't have clothing, where they don't have little gadgets and little bling you can attach to your character or to the weapons of the character or other kind of tools. So that's pretty big. And that makes a lot of money. And then when you have these kind of metaverse things, uh, think about like Second Life, for example, um, you can sell things to other people um, like cool online gadgets, stuff like that, right? Um, it's impossible to patent words. Is it? I don't think it is. I'm pretty sure you will find that, um, for example, the, the line um, just do it by Nike is protected by them. If you make sneakers and you write just do it under them, they're gonna, <laughs> they just do you <laughs> with their lawyers. 
<laughs> it's called overhead expense. Yeah, right, right. Um, okay. If we are business is the way to go. Yeah, it's going to be the future, right? That's going to be really interesting. Sell portrait photos of, for profile pictures. They're going to be, they, they probably have apps for that, right? So I, unless you're a good coder and you can write an app, which can also be cool. If you, if you have it in you to make an AR, a, uh, sorry, an AI app right now, you could start it at that right now because you might be one of the people who make hundreds of millions from that one app, right? Um, you never know, right? Uh, by the way, um, one thing you might want to do right now with AI is to think about um, not just like thinking about mid journey and stuff like that and creating images. That's nice. But that is what we do right now. We already have achieved that. Think about what is going to be the future of what we do with AI. How is AI being integrated in the future, right? And of course, there's a process and things change over time, but you can also change with your business over time. So that's not a problem. But think about the services, think about the needs that will be required in the future by people or by other businesses, stuff like that, right? So how will things look in the future? And um, one of the things that AI enables us to do is to have things progressive in a certain way, right? So in, in video game terms, for example, you have progressive in a way where you go through a level and the level is built while you walk through the level, right? So it's always a fresh kind of design. Um, so AI can enable that for you with a lot of other things where AI is creating things for you in the background that is individual to the customer based on the information of the customer. So everybody has a different unique experience for themselves or the AI is facilitating for them the processes as they like as a support in the background. The machine is doing the things you would do anyways for you because they are repetitive tasks. You don't need to do them. So think about how could AI fit in there? A lot of that is for coders. But a lot of that can also be like simpler services where you just figure out um, how can I integrate services easier for the customer, right? So mm, like I said, AI is a super big field. Don't just think about the first thing that comes to mind, which in that case is to create an image with the AI just because it's an image AI. You can do a lot more with that, right? Um, you can even like create the images, but then do different things with the images. So you can create the images and then use them as a source for inspiration to, for example, um, consult other people on ideas to say, okay, we could do this, we could do that. Like, for example, color theme, stuff like that. For example, um, one thing you could do is YouTube channels, Twitch channels, all these social media people, they need designs for their channels, right? So if the AI can help you to come up with interesting color schemes, with interesting designs, uh, depending on what they need, depending on how their, uh, their uh, community works, that could be a starting point where you are a designer, but you use the AI to create the first ideas, the first color combinations and themes and shapes and stuff like that. And then you can sell it to them, right? And of course, if you're a good designer, you know that design is only one part of the equation. You also have that whole book of the, what is it called again? Um, the corporate identity. Uh, it's, there's a better word for that. Brand identity, like how things, why things are in a certain way, how they are used in a certain way, what kind of fonts are used, what's the reason behind that. So ex you explain all of that a little bit. What are the emotions behind the colors, behind the shapes, behind the fonts, behind the, uh, the ways things are combined. And that is a big part of that. And that makes the product a lot more um, worth at the end, right? Because it's more useful at that point. Okay, um, let's see. Uh, AI rejuvenation treatment would make millionaires for all of us. <laughs> okay, personally, eh? uh, being trained on you specifically. Yeah, that that's gonna. Be, I think personal AIs are gonna be very very big. Um, I mean, you could also think about. There's already, of course, the big companies are on that. Google's on that. Everybody's on that. But um, having um uh, uh like if you think about google call up this kind of cloud computing to offer servers to offer power uh, gpu power stuff like that rent them to customers that could also be a service right 
And sometimes that's a service you don't want to do over cloud, right? So I think, for example, if I'm not mistaken, for Hollywood, you have these render trucks. So they come by, you load the data into the truck, the whole truck is filled with servers, and then it's rendering that thing because they don't want, of course, to put their super secret project on the Amazon or Google servers where maybe it gets hacked, maybe it gets lost or stuff like that. You want to have it on your own computer. So that could be an interesting thing for businesses who are secret about their information. They can't put it on the web. You come by with all that setup and you render it for them. That might be an interesting thing, right? Um Getting young is a great business. Is a uh, yeah. That's that's also. I mean, you already have that in cameras and stuff like that, where they remove your wrinkles and make the skin tone nicer and stuff like that. So uh, this kind of media representation of yourself is already a big part of that, right? Um, where I painted my environment into existence. <laughs> Interesting. Do you have any other kind of ideas here, um, or what else? What else questions do you have? I talked so much. Maybe not business ideas. What kind of questions do you have about the kind of business thing, right? Um, maybe I can explain um, until you ask the questions. I can explain a little bit about um, how does how does social media business work. Um, so, in the past, and this was like um, not even long ago, maybe twenty years ago. Um, it was really hard for people to imagine that you have a business where you give away your services for free most of the time. So 90% 90, 90 of the time you give it away for free and then or maybe 95% of the time you give away your service for free and then you make money with the rest of the 5% and that's good. And people couldn't imagine it because back then reach was really hard. It was really hard to, to connect to your customer because there was just no medium, right? You had a web page, um, but people needed to visit that web page. And of course, there's like millions of web pages. So who would do that? So the big innovation of social media was to bring everybody together on these pages and exchange there. And that's not just having an online forum or having an online blog or stuff like that. This is actually millions of people meeting in one place and seeing stuff on that one place. And suddenly, this makes it possible that millions of people can see your content because they are already here. And this is what social media are. And at that point, it makes a lot more sense to say, hey, I give away my product for free and then... At a certain point, I make money from giving it away for free. So that is the social media concept is to say, I give away my information to a million people. And then maybe a handful of people comes back and says, yeah, I want to pay you for that. Right. Or you have advertisement on that or you have merchandise or you have other things. Right. You have donations, stuff like that. So there's a lot of a lot of a lot of ways um, to to have different kind of income streams. Right. Um. So that is how the social media business works. This is how the, the, the business idea works of giving away things for free, which is a very good business model. Um, if you want to do that, you could do it on social media or find another way where you think, how can I get information, my information in front of a lot of people and then make money with that at a certain point? Like another concept for that, a little bit more old school concept, but it still works really, really good, is to make um, a newsletter. Maybe the new version of the newsletter is the podcast, right? It, which is also kind of social media uh, where uh, with the newsletter, the difference is people have to subscribe to your newsletter. Uh, but if you have a lot of people, imagine you have a newsletter with 80,000 subscribers, you can sell ad spaces on that newsletter, right? And that pays a lot. And you can write, uh, like you can do sponsorships, stuff like that. And people will reach out to you because of the topics you write about. you. So you can make an AI newsletter, for example, and um, give people the newest information. And then um, they uh, either they will reach out for you to ask you for consulting on a one-on-one -on -one, or people want to advertise with their service, stuff like that. Okay, so let's go here to some things that have been written. Ryan says, I'm a technical artist in Unreal Engine. I've been using Mitchell and Stable Diffusion to generate textures and depth maps for games. Have you heard anyone having success selling AI generated materials? Well, there's a lot of people who sell materials. It doesn't really, it, there's no difference if they are made with AI or not. The only important thing is do people want to buy these materials? So for that, um, 
you just need to figure out what are the materials people want to buy and what what is it you want to actually sell right what are you good at what kind of design are you good at what kind of topic do you understand because just because ai can do any kind of style and any kind of topic doesn't mean that you understand any kind of style and any kind of topic because because these subgroups these subgenres these subcultures they have an internal understanding on how, how they work right so if you say hey i make steampunk and i do whatever the ai puts out as steampunk but you don't understand the steampunk culture and what the requirements of these people are and how they see the actual elements in there you don't know what they actually want to buy. So you need to research it a little bit. So if you have something where say, hey, this is the kind of game that I like. This is the kind of thing that I can provide for with materials. Is it textures? Is it 3D models? Uh, it could be a lot of things. Is it is it is it visual effects uh, or other kind of things, right? A lot of things could be done. Um, and then figure out how could you sell it to them? And is it custom made or do you like put it on a store and people can just use it as assets, stuff like that. And again, you could, you could make a service where you give away the stuff for free. So you get famous with your textures. You are the texture guy for, let's say steampunk games or for horror games. Let's say horror games. It's maybe a little bit bigger. So you are the guy who gives away the most amazing textures for horror games. And then people come to you and say, hey, but we need it custom. We don't want to have what everybody else is having. We want our own stuff. So how much is it? And then because you're big, you say, well, my price is high, but I'm worth it. So uh, this is the cost, right? And so this is how you get the money back. Or you you sell the bigger bag. Like you have a free one with 10 textures and then you have a, a premium one with 100 textures, stuff like that. Um, Hans says, when should you make the leap from self-employed starting a company? How much finance runway should we have um i mean if the company allows it and if you have enough time you can run with your own business on the side for years until you feel comfortable doing it right um but uh, there's also one thing i don't want to name the name of the guy because i don't like him but he said something very smart <laughs> He's a jerk, so I don't want to name him. But he said something very smart. Where he said, if you have a dream and you really want to do it, maybe sell your expensive car and sell your expensive house and move back in with your parents uh, and tr like have a super low cost style lifestyle uh, and make try to make your business happen. Um, or try to go into like different kind of business ideas to see what can happen. So that's actually kind of a good idea to try to, how can you lower the costs you have and the requirements you have? For example, I don't have kids. I don't have a wife. There's a lot of expenses I don't have in my life that are, uh, I don't go out to fancy things and stuff like that. I don't have a car. Uh, so I can, I can spend that money. Either I can spend that money on building a business, but what I like more is spending the time. <laughs> I rather do what I want to do and lie in bed and watch YouTube videos and just like relax than having more money. Uh, because there's always this kind of balance of how money, how much money do you actually need and how much work do you actually want to do, right? Uh, so I enjoy my life of uh, having, being free, but also making a living at the same time, right? And I want to have more and more success, but I don't want to kill myself over it. So I want to have a good balance of like just getting up, and then going outside right now to the market, just walk around for hours through Bangkok, look at the things, eat some ice cream, and then I come back and do my research and my work and make the next video, right? I don't want to sit here 16 hours a day just because I could make 10 times the money. What, what are you going to do with 10 times the money, right? Um, okay, where's the next one? Oh, I've already read that. Okay. Um, wait, this is jumping here again. Let me put this up here and then can pull this down and maybe it should uh, go a little bit faster here. Uh, what was the last one? I'm using AI to illustrate my music. Okay, that sounds interesting. Um, how do you become a technical artist in Unreal Engine? I don't know. <laughs> I'm, uh, you have to work, you have to ask the other guy. Um, with AI or not is quality should be determined by factor in its value and worth yeah but value and worth and quality are not the same thing uh, people value something um without it necessarily needing to have the biggest quality and this is by the way this is this is a classic thing um 
I, I, I can explain it to you in two ways. Oh, there's something coming in. Oh, someone donated. Hey, cool. Th uh, thank you, Nexus. Thank you very much. Um, he says a quick shout out. Oh, a cup of coffee. Thank you very much. There you go. It already arrived here. Look at that. <laughs> that was super quick. Hmm. <laughs> Very good, thank you very much. Uh, what was I talking about? Oh yeah, I have two examples for you. Let's say you want to buy a steak. Do you want to buy the steak or let's say you want to buy a burger? Do you want to buy a burger you can afford or do you want to buy the best burger on the market? So let's say the best burger costs $250 and the one that you can get in the store next door is like three bucks, but it's it's okay. It stuffs your, it, it's like makes you happy. Why would you buy the $250 burger? Nobody would buy that. Some people would uh, because they are like, I don't know, they have money to burn, I guess. Uh, but usually you wouldn't, right? So that, that's the same thing, right? With with every kind of business. Now, the next thing is, uh, again, with, with dating, businesses like dating, would you want to have the most beautiful person in the world, like the most aesthetic person in the world, the most good looking person in the world? Or would you want to have a person that looks average, but you fit really well, right? Why would you have a, like the most, most people even are not interested in super beauty. They don't care for that. They don't even want to go for that, right? They say, no, I want to have someone who is nice and passionate and interested and emotional and we just fit well together. And I, it, I'm super happy if the person looks kind of like me and not like a, a god, right? I don't want to be the little uh, pickle on the on the on the cheek of a god <laughs> right i want to have someone who is on my level right so yeah <laughs> i like i look like a caveman so i need a cave woman <laughs> you know what i mean so that's that's how business works too people people aren't looking for the best thing they're looking for the thing that fits best to their like the money they want to expend and the need they have so that's that's the important part here and already i lost oh no there it is Hexual services are essential for the lonely and disabled. Hexual? What are hexual services? I don't know what that means. Um, I've heard people argue that AI art isn't worth anything. Well, then just ignore them. You know, just ignore these people. They they have nothing to say, so you have nothing to listen to. It's very easy. It's a very easy deal to make. <laughs> uh, my question earlier was, how do we get to 3D from 2D? diffusion because just adding the depth texture isn't complete 3d they are working on ai who creates 3d so we just have to wait for that a little bit longer um john says ai uh, generated photo art etc will never belong to you it made it's made by the a that lives on servers why would you that that argument makes absolutely no sense because it's made by someone else, you can't own it? How about meat? How about milk? How about honey? Did you make honey? Really? You're a bee? You go to the flowers and make honey yourself? No, you don't. The bee makes it and you sell it. That's how it works, right? So just because you didn't make it doesn't mean you can't sell it. That's that's nonsense. Anyways, uh, let's go on. <laughs> uh, it kind of sounds like... Lonely existence. What sounds like a lonely existence? I don't know. Oh, uh, without the kids and the the wife. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Could be. Um. People steal my wife's and my art all the time. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's just just life. Uh, one thing of quality, rather than many things of poor quality. Hmm, I don't know. They haven't found the right wife. Uh, could you do a detailed workflow on the image to image with Photoshop and masking? I think I already did that. We even did a live stream, but it wasn't. It, maybe it wasn't good, so we, we can do another one, I guess. <laughs> it was a fast delivery. Yes, I'm so behind on the chat. Let's let's jump over some messages here. Let's read from the first from the newest message here. So nature says it is always important to start with what you have and build from there rather than waiting for the perfect opportunity. Yes, that is also true. That is actually a very good point. Um, 
I mean, don't start, maybe don't start with nothing and, and pretend like you have something that's never a good idea. And I see that so often that people try to sell something and they try to force yourselves, uh, themselves on you uh, where you know they have no idea what they're talking about. And when you have done that kind of thing, uh, you can you, you just like they say three words and you already know they have no idea what they're talking about. So... Um, yeah, you should have some experience of what you want to do. Or at least you have to have more experience than the customer, which often is not hard because the customer doesn't want to do that. So they also don't want to do the research. Um, so it's easy to have a little bit more knowledge than them and be able to help them. But only like sell... I mean, there's two ways you can do it. Either you sell more than you can do and then you find someone who can do it, but you have to pay them for that work. Or you stay with what you can do, right? Um, which is a slower burn, of course, because then you have to learn everything yourself. Um, it's actually good. It's it's. Uh, I never learned that myself, to be honest. But it is a good thing to learn how to have other people do the stuff for you and you sell their services because then you don't have to learn everything yourself and you can make a lot more money with that. Um, I, I always did my own thing, but that also is why I'm limited to my own stuff. And I recently tried to have an assistant for my channel to help me with things, but I figured quickly out that um, I did my own thing for so long that I have no way to explain to them what they actually should do because all of the processes are built for my understanding. They are not systemized. They don't have any kind of structure. So it's really hard for them to follow in anything. So I need to rebuild my way of doing things uh, before I can get a team on board, right? Also, I, I, I realized I get kind of annoyed with people who are not super as super passionate about the things as I am. So... <laughs> <laughs> they just want to do their work. And I'm kind of upset about that, that they are not like, oh, wow, this is all AI and stuff like that. Of course, they are not into AI. They just like there to, to do. I said, okay, I need someone to help me with some simple things, which turned out not to be simple at all. Um, and they weren't into AI. That person wasn't into AI uh, because, well, I, I, didn't I didn't ask for that, right? So that would be good to have someone who is more into AI. Uh, but also have a like a business understanding and a social media understanding and it's suddenly it's like a copy of me which is not great you shouldn't you shouldn't look for that um you should look for experts who are better than you in the things you can't do yourself uh let's go to the other comments here um outrun says i would like to be able to use it and generate money but oh i i i think i i don't follow a conversation um robert says and they will be happier if you give examples of how you would do it. Yes, you need to have some examples. That's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't go to a customer and just talk. Go to a customer and have already successful, even if just virtual examples. So when I, for example, did my um, design company where I did websites and stuff like that, I just made up some mock websites, which is even better than customer websites, real customer websites, because most customers want things that don't look so good, but is helpful for the business. But you, of course, want to show the customer something that looks great. So if you have a made up page for a fake company, um, you can make a really beautiful design where all of the images match and the colors match and everything is in tune and it just looks great. And then, of course, the customer comes around and you make a beautiful design and then they stuff it with their own images and their own kind of things. And it just like kind of breaks apart because they don't have a great photographer and the photos don't have the, the same colors as the website and suddenly it doesn't look so great. It doesn't it isn't in tune as much as you know, what if you know what I mean. But um, so, yeah, you have to have some demo projects for them, right? By the way, if you go directly to speak with customers, one trick I can tell you that is really, really helpful, have an iPad. Have an iPad, not an Android pad, not a shitty off-brand pad, not a Samsung pad or whatever. Have an iPad and have the big fat Apple logo on the back visible not behind something else visible because that immediately makes trust because people trust that brand and it associates you with that brand so if you come in with a new ipad and you say oh, hey uh, let me show you 
my ideas. Here first is my my credentials of being able to afford an iPad, which is not that expensive anyway. So as an investment in your business, it's kind of okay. And then already they, and of course, also the screen looks good. It's high resolution. It has nice color, stuff like that. So everything looks better. And the people already know this is not just like a guy who came from the streets. He has at least enough money to have an iPad. So that's a good trick, to be honest. Um, although today you don't meet mid customers as often, but if you do, that might be a good way to do that. Anyways, um, AI isn't the enemy humanity is. Well, depends to to whom. <laughs> Anyways, um, okay. I, I don't think there's more, um, there's no more questions about um, business, right? Because people are talking about all kinds of other things. Nobody's asking me anything. So I guess maybe I've answered everything or maybe I, I bored you with my, <laughs> everybody, <laughs> nobody's listening anymore. Anyways, instant red flag. No, it isn't. It is, it is it's, it's like a suit. But of course, as a creative person, you don't wear a suit. Um, but you can bring an iPad, right? So that's good. Okay, anyways. Uh, is there anything I've left over uh, for talking about business? No, I don't think so. We have covered a lot of ground today. Like I said, not like specific plans. Um, what's the Get Rich summary? The Get Rich summary is figure out what the customer needs and how you can provide it and how you are the best solution for their problem. And, and then the money comes rolling in. People, people couldn't give you the money f quick enough if you have the service they require and it's for the price they want, right? Even if the price is a little bit higher, like go to the town. Everybody and their mom is criticizing Starbucks for being expensive and shitty coffee. And every time you see a Starbucks, no matter where it is, in the end of the world, that Starbucks is filled with people who are willing to pay a top price for average coffee. Because Starbucks has built a brand that people like, these cool coffees with mocha, foca, Christmas, pumpkin, spicy latte. That just sounds cool and it also tastes cool because there is a ton of sugar in there, a million calories per coffee, and people like that, right? Boom, there you go, right? So that that's, um, yeah, <laughs> that's how that goes. <laughs> mm. It doesn't matter if a lot of people hate Starbucks. More people love Starbucks. Enough people love Starbucks to make it a business. Same with McDonald's and stuff like that, right? People complain, ah, oh, it's bad burgers. There's nothing inside, but it's always full. It's always full. McDonald's is always stuffed with people, right? Okay, anyways. Um, yeah, so that, that's basically that's that's basically concept. Try to figure out what the market needs and then build your little niche. Mocha foca. <laughs> <laughs> coffee yeah <laughs> um Jason says I'm already selling you regularly but that's not what I'm looking for I think it's below the potential and competition will be here eventually can we email you for project call-ups no you can't I'm, I'm not really interested in project call-ups um because I'm I'm doing social media that's my main thing so I don't want to do like other business and I don't want to promote a business that I that is I don't know nothing about right um, if you think you are selling under your potential get a sales expert right if you have a good product but you think it should sell better get someone who's an expert at selling and getting it into different stores and getting it in front of more people and then um, have that person help you with it and they get a percentage they get a cut of um, your sales right or uh, also look into your methods on how you sell and why it doesn't sell more. Maybe you have already reached a limit, like not every product can sell unlimited times, right? So there is there is a limit for um, how much money you can make with a business, 
right? And sometimes that limit is reached quicker or, or less quick. Like, for example, if you... If you are, a, I don't know, if you're a baker in your district, there is just as much f uh, uh, bread you can sell to the people in your district. Maybe you can expand to other districts. That would be an option or do other things or sell it online, stuff like that. <clears throat> But if you only sell to that district around you, the people around you in a, let's say, five minute walking distance, that limit is reached pretty fast and then you can't sell anymore. That's it. That's the end of the story. So either you find other ways or you're happy with um, that, that thing, right? Um, MP4 says, I'm learning Blender. <laughs> oh, that's a different question. Okay. Anyways, I think we kind of reached the topic here. Or, oh, there's another comment. We were planning to start a custom painting portrait business with Midjourney. We get orders from clients and we draw their faces, but will affect. But why would you do that with Midjourney? Midjourney can't be trained on the faces of people, right? I mean, it can be a little bit, but not as good as Stable Diffusion and Dream Booth. So I'm not sure if that's like people know what they look like. If they look different than they actually look, they will not be that happy, right? Instagram commission work. I'm currently looking for over Instagram for commission work. Commission work for what? Right? For creating AI images? Oh, it's the same guy. For the portraits? First of all, there's already apps who do that. I think even for free. I'm not sure if that is a huge market and if people even want to do that. And if it's like easy to do, why would they need you? You have to find something where you actually people need like this. This is the classic thing. So you want to do portraits for people. But do you know if there's actually people who want that? Right. Have you ever seen online anyone post? Oh, I wish I could do that, but I don't know how. And then there's these portrait apps who already you can upload your photos and then they return yourself in the style of different like superheroes and stars in, in a couple of minutes. They train that kind of model for you in the app or in the in their cloud server and then they return the images. And it, I think it's either free or it's like low cost. So that is already there. Not sure if that is a service like Do the research, ask people, do you actually want that? Before even trying to find customers, ask people, do you want that? What do you expect from that? What kind of images? How many images? Who, for, of whom? Of your dead relative, of your children, of yourself, of your employee of the week? Why, who would you use that for, right? And what do they want to pay for that, right? And if it's, if it's customers, they probably don't want to pay much. Especially because images right now are not worth much anyways, right? You have a camera in your phone, so you can take a photo of yourself for free by, um, you know what I mean? So you have to figure out what is the circumstance, what is the requirement for that specifically, right? Uh, okay, let me see. Is there anything else? How about creating YouTube videos with AI art and scripting it with AI writer and giving it a specific voice? Could be stories, articles, etc. That's already been done. There's already a lot of channels who you write a script and you have an AI voice and you, you have sometimes auto-generated videos from, from the uh, like different media parts and stuff like that from new stories or they just aggregate like they go to a page and say okay what what is the topic for today the the 50 or like the the 30 cutest cat videos they download that they put it together they write a script they have the ai voice read it and that's it and sometimes you can completely automate that process it's about news and stuff like that so there's already channels doing that um And sometimes uh, they know how, in that case, if you want to do that, you probably need to know how to build a channel and how to grow a channel really fast. 
because just uploading things to YouTube is not where you get the views from. And it's also not good content. It is about how do you find your community? How do you build the channel? How do you get people interested in your content? That is the business, right? Because like, for example, for me, um, I could I could do videos about anything all day long, but it doesn't mean it's a good video. I have to think about what is the stuff people actually need. What can get me at least 10,000 views, maybe 20, maybe 30, maybe 50,000 views. What what is interesting to 50,000 people right now? That is that is my job to do that, right? And this is also why you have these people where um well, th this is what you are as a creator. You you understand what people need and you understand how to create it in a way that people that satisfies people. And not everybody can do that, right? Because this so this is why you have some creators who have success and then you have a lot more, like a thousand times, ten thousand times more people who don't know how to do that, right? Um, and so you basically have to research that. Um, Dude, Dolfer, I'm going to ban you from my channel if you don't stop spamming. I'm going to put you on another timeout. You're really annoying me here with your bullshit. Um, should I ban you right away? I'm not quite sure. Uh, uh, there's also this kind of channels. You, often, you probably have seen that. Like there's a lot of like channels who only are built to grow the channel. I don't even know what the purpose is. Probably the purpose is to suck out as much uh, ad revenue as possible. So you probably have seen these channels who um, who uh, just show you a video from a short film or whatever, and then they tell you what you see on screen while you're seeing it on screen with a computer voice. Right, you have seen these shorts on TikTok, on YouTube Shorts, wherever, on Facebook. It's it's just easy content because for some reason it's entertaining to look at that. So people, millions of people watch that, and they make money with the ad revenue from that. Right, so that's that's kind of a concept. It's a it's a it's a it's a uh, not a great concept to make business, but it it kind of works. Right. Or you have, for example, other uh, other concept is where you see people making cakes and stuff like that. But because making watching someone make a cake maybe not as interesting, they find interesting audio from other people from their TikToks because on TikTok you can just use the audio from anybody you want and put it on your video. Um, for some reason that's legal, and for some reason nobody's crying about that kind of copyright. Uh, and so they have the cake baking video, and at the same time you hear a story about uh, like how sh uh, uh, she was cheated on by her boyfriend or stuff, not from her, from another person who has nothing to do with that video, because then you have two things that might be entertaining. So either you like the cake video or you don't, but you also might like the audio story or you don't. So there's two chances you keep watching that video, and there's two chances for them to make more views and to get more ad revenue, stuff like that, right? Um, so these figuring out these kind of angles, what works, why does it work, how does it work, right? That that's the kind of thing, right? For example, for me, um, one thing I could not, I can't figure out yet, is how to make viral videos, right? It happens sometimes on my channel, but not that often, and I can't do it with precision and with like in a repetitive way. I have not figured out that skill yet. I know how to make a video that gets 10 or 20,000 views, and that's pretty cool. Um, and I learned a lot from the AI wave, basically, on how topics and uh, interests work in a different way than what I did before with my channel. Uh, but that kind of thing, like, for example, what Mr. Beast is doing, where you do stuff where you know this is going to get a million views, I don't know how to do that. Uh, of course, to a certain degree, I don't want to do that. Like you could do similar things that Mr. Beast and actually I'm thinking about doing one idea that he did years ago. I might try that. It might be funny just to see if it works or not. Um, but what he does is like these kind of um, funny, entertaining sensations. Like uh, and, and 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 recently he's also just like right out blandly copying uh, successful TV shows from the past. Japanese uh, TV shows especially, right? 
yeah, uh, what is it called? Um, uh, blah 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 castle. What is it called? Where they did all these challenges and stuff. Copied it right away, and he made that video with the wall with the boxes where they sit on the boxes and they other people come out and they throw balls in the boxes and stuff like that. So to make them the boxes fall over, so the people fall down. That is an old an old Japanese TV show, and he just copied it. Boom, just like that. So mm. I'm not doing that on my channel, of course. I'm not sitting on a box and try to fall down. But yeah, there's there's things you could do um, that it might be more entertaining, more interesting. Uh, and more challenging also, right? There is no formula for virality. Why would you think that? It's absolutely wrong. What, what do you think advertisement is? It's it's a formal for virality, right? If you have a company and they say, hey, I give you $10 million to make an advertisement, you better create the views. You better bring it in front of people. You better make people like that advertisement, right? So absolutely, there is a strategy to viral content, right? Absolutely there is. And absolutely people know how to do that and are experts at that. It was chance 20 years ago. It's not chance anymore, right? Some people are really, really good at that. Takeshi's Castle, yes, Takeshi's Castle. He just stole that stuff. <laughs> it's just like, boom, okay, let's let's make my own Takeshi Castle. Maybe he called it like that. I don't know. Um, but um, yeah, he just like, I, I I was looking at his stuff. I'm not really watching his videos, to be honest, because that's not kind of the content I like, although I like Takeshi's Castle. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I looked at it and it was like, hey, that is th exactly that show that you just did there. You have to you have to search on YouTube for Takeshi's Castle. It's a really amazing show. If you don't know that, you missed out on so much. Okay. Anyways, let's. Oh yeah, it was there was a there was a German translation even from the Japanese. That show was so good. They translated it and showed it in different parts of the world. Just the like the and they never recreated it for a Western audience. There was never a German version of that or an American version of stuff like that. As far as I know, I don't know why there isn't a. Uh, whatever um johnny's castle or stuff like that you know what i mean anyways okay i think that's enough for today how long is the stream is easily over one hour right oh my god it's two hours holy crap okay so i hope you enjoyed that i hope you could i could give you some ideas and insight on how to get business minded get out there and get your feet dirty and your fingers wet or whatever that is called <laughs> to try in a small way, don't risk too much, just try in a small way to sell things, right? It can be very small, it can be very small, uh, just to, to get you in the mindset of um, what could be a business. It could be a super, super easy, simple thing to do. You can go to your old neighbor and say, hey, can I go shopping for you? Um, can you pay me a couple of bucks and I go to the shop and get you the stuff you need? Or I mow your lawn. And it sounds super ridiculous and stupid, but this gives you a good understanding on how to interact with customers and what they need and how you talk to them and how to make business and how to make the customer happy. And also this kind of thing where you learn, how can I deliver more than the customer is expecting, but still I make a, a premium on that, right? To figure that out, you can do with super simple things and you learn a lot from that. And not in an, don't do it in an employee way. Don't work for a restaurant and figure out how to be a good waiter because then you're an employee again. Do your own thing because that is, it feels completely different to do your own thing. It's really, really important to try that. Okay. Right, I hope I could inspire you with that. Uh, thank you very much for watching. <laughs> and uh, if you want, we can do this uh, another time with some more information and insights. But until then, just uh, just give it a try. And don't use my Facebook group to promote your business, right? That's not a good idea. It's about sharing and talking about AI art. It's not a business place. So you have to find other places for that. Anyway. Oh, wait, 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 wait. There's one more thing. There's one more thing before you go that's really important to know. Sell at the places where your customers are because I see that so often that people do that wrong. Like, for example, you have painters or graphic designers and they are in a graphic design group offering their services to other graphic designers. That is not your audience. You have to go to a place where people don't know about design, but they want to have a design product. For example, if you do book covers, go to a writer's group. 
to promote your book covers, not to a design group to promote your book covers. It doesn't make any sense. Hey, thank you very much, Ruben, for the donation. Awesome. Thank you. That came in the last second. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Another, like actually a bag of coffee this time. Thank you very much for that. That's really, really appreciated. Mm. There we go. So yeah, thank you for that. And now I have to, I actually don't have to go to bed anymore because here it's six in the morning. So yeah, it's time for an early wakey wakey. <laughs> okay. I hope you had a lot of joy, uh, a lot of fun with that. And um, yeah. See you soon. Let me pull up here the end music and then switch over. Turn this on and there we go. Okay, bye.